Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to test an interaction uh, via multiple regression in SPSS. Now, very briefly, an interaction is said to be observed when the nature and or strength of the relationship between two variables changes as a function of a third variable. What, and it's what some people call a moderator uh, or moderation analysis. In this example here, uh, these data are taken from um, a textbook from David C. Howell, Statistical Methods for Psychology. And I've chosen this data set for two reasons, uh, one of which is related to the manner in which uh, David Howell's book uh, describes how to demonstrate an, an interaction effect in a scatter plot. The way he does it is the most conventional way of doing it, but it's quite long, torturous, and painful to actually do it. Uh, so I'm going to show you a quick, a much quicker way of doing it, and arguably a more accurate way of uh, depicting an interaction interaction effect in um, in SPSS or any other kind of software program. Uh, the other reason I chose this is related to a very common mistake people m uh, make, uh, including myself. Uh, when they analyze data, and I'm not going to mention too much about that except towards the end. So if you stick up, stick around till the end of this video series, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's very, very important uh, that we always check this kind of thing. So I'm going to describe, describe the study. This is actually data based on a study that was published in 1988 uh, by Wagner, Com Compass, and Howell. Uh, and um, the Two the two independent variables are hassles and support, and the hypothesis is that uh, symptoms will be related to hassles, but the nature or strength of that relationship will depend upon the level of support somebody's experiencing. So somebody might be having a lot of hassles in their life, which would be expected to impact, at least in a correlation uh, perspective, from a correlation perspective, uh, impacts symptoms positively, so ha more hassles, more symptoms, but if you have a lot of support, well then you'll experience a buffering effect, and that's what people basically talk about in terms of moderator effects. So to test this hypothesis statistically, uh, usually what you have to do is uh, you have to take into cons you, you basically model the interaction effect by a product term. You literally multiply Hassel's scores by support scores. Uh, so this is your these, your independent variable, your main effect, and this is a main effect, and you multiply the two effects together. But before I do that, let's look at the correlations between the uh, the variables. And we can see that uh, Hassel's infax does positively correlate with symptoms at 0.577. So the higher Hassel's, the higher symptoms you have. But support uh, and Hassel's don't really correlate with each other. If they do, it's a little bit negatively. And support and symptoms also don't really correlate with each other. And if anything, it's a little bit negatively. And uh, you can probably get into a debate as to whether you can use a variable uh, in a moderation analysis if it's not statistically significant correlated with your other variables. And I would say you should be able to. Uh, because it, you will see some effects at times uh, where your moderate effect is not uh, correlated with them. Uh, but I'm just showing you the nature of the correlations here. Now, if I c calculate a hassles by support product term, then uh, very likely there's going to be some big correlations between those two variables independently with that product term. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we transform and compute and create a product term to represent the uh, interaction effect, so literally multiply these together, we will find that when we correlate them, with the other main, the other variables, that we get a big, big correlation between hassles and hassle support. So it's uh, 8.835 uh, correlation between hassles and hassle support. And the way we test interaction hypotheses, we have to include the main effects first and then the product term. Well, this is going to cause problems related to multicollinearity, some people would argue. Uh, and so if you don't know what multicollinearity is and the problems associated with that, I encourage you to check out a video I have on multicollinearity. But if you already know about multicollinearity and the problems associated with that, then you'll understand that we may have a problem here. So 
So to counteract that, what people do 